Hello guys, it's unit 2, part F. Today's topic is physiology of menstrual cycle. See, at the later puberty age, that is around from 8 to 16 years, the girl gets her first menstrual cycle or first menses and that is known as menarche. And at the age of 40 to 58 years, the women get end of the menstrual cycle. The cessation of menstrual cycle and that is known as menopause. The beginning is known as menarche and the ending is known as menopause. And normally this menstrual cycle is last for 7 days and that is normal. If it is lasting more than 10 days then you need to visit the doctor. What is menstrual cycle in brief? In short, every month ovulation occurs. Ovulation in the sense ovary releases egg and that is known as ovulation. This released egg goes to fallopian tube and wait there. Goes to fallopian tube and wait there. If sperm comes within 2 to 3 days, fertilization occurs and women get pregnant and there is no menstrual cycle for 9 months. If sperm doesn't come, then the ovary present in the fallopian tube get dries within 2 weeks and menstrual cycle occurs. Now, reproductive cycle or menstrual cycle. Menstrual cycle is also known as reproductive cycle or female reproductive cycle. This cycle is actually divided into two cycles, uterine cycle and then ovarian cycle. Generally, menstrual cycle takes place in 28 days every month. Every month, 28 days, okay? This 28 days is actually divided into two cycles, that is 14 days here and 14 days here. Now, first, first menstrual cycle starts with pituitary gland. Pituitary gland secretes FSH and LH hormone. Secretes in the sense produces. Produces FSH and LH hormone. These two hormones are useful in maturation of follicles. In ovary, these two hormones helps in like this. Maturations of follicles. After maturation of follicles, this pituitary glands increases the estrogen and progesterone levels in our body. Estrogen and progesterone hormones will get increased. And these two hormones are used in lining the uterine. Here the uterus cavity get lined up. This gets lined up because for bearing the baby. Because there is a chance of getting conception. So uterus gets prepared for bearing the baby. So lining of uterine occurs. Next Again, pituitary gland releases LH hormone. This LH hormone helps in ovulation. Ovulation in the sense, this ovary releases one mature follicle outside and it goes to ampulla and waits here. Until here, it is known as uterine. Uterine cycle. And this occurs within 14 days. This ovulation occurs in 14th day. What happens from beginning? Pituitary gland secretes FSH and LH hormone. These two hormones are responsible for maturation of follicles. If there is a question which hormones helps in maturation of follicles, those are FSH and LH hormone. And then estrogen and progesterone is also released after a few days. And these two hormones helps in lining of uterus to thicken. In the sense, uterus is lined like this. This uterus cavity is lined. Now, which hormones is used in lining the uterus is known as estrogen and progesterone. And then which hormone is used in ovulation? That is LH hormone. Until here, uterine cycle. This occurs in 14 days. And next 14 days is here. This stage is known as ovarian cycle and this is next 14 days. In next 14 days, ovary is active. This ovary, the released egg, which is in ampulla, is active for only 3 days. After 3 days, this ovary gets dry. Within 3 days, if sperm comes and meet it, if conception occurs, the woman gets pregnant and there is no menstrual cycle. If there is no sperm entered and the ovary is, uh, doesn't occur any fertilization, then the menstrual cycle occurs in next two weeks. Two weeks. From here, the next 14 days, 
the ovary is active for only 3 days after 3 days the ovary starts getting dry after 3 days the ovary gets dry end of the 2 weeks there is a fall of estrogen and progesterone the pituitary gland stops supplying i mean stops producing the estrogen and progesterone around the end of this second week this is the reason of menstrual which hormone triggers the menstruation that is estrogen i mean fall of estrogen and progesterone sudden fall of estrogen and progesterone is the main reason of menstruation at the time of menstruation in the form of blood flow all the lining in the uterine cavity swipes out and this menstrual cycle occurs generally for 7 days 5 to 7 days after 7 days again the cycles continue again the uterus get prepared for bearing the baby again it swipes out again it get prepared for the baby again it swipes out this cycle continuously occur now the phases of menstrual cycle there are actually three phases prophylactic phase secretory phase menstrual phase these are the three phase prophylactic phase occurs from 6 to 14 days in this period fsh hormone is produced for follicle maturation endocrine layer is endocrine layer is rebuilt estrogen and lh hormone progesterone everything is released and lh hormone helps in ovulation and this comes under prophylactic phase after 14th day ovarian cycle occurs in the sense secretory phase occurs secretory phase in occurs in 15 to 28 days that is 14 days here every hormone is maintained normally like lh is hormone is also producing more progesterone is also producing more endocrine layer lining is also occurring normally the lining is also increasing day by day it waits for 14 days at the end of the 14th day there is a sudden fall drop in estrogen and progesterone hormone there is a sudden drop in estrogen and progesterone hormone and that leads to menstruation that is menstrual period that is for 1 to 5 or 1 to 7 days normally 5 days and at this time endometrium breaks down endometrium breaks down in the sense the lining of uterine gets swiped out and this is phases of menstrual cycle now common menstrual problems first premenstrual syndrome premenstrual syndrome in the sense before getting their menstrual before getting their periods they will get the symptoms like backache uh, vomiting sensation even fatigue tiredness headache everything uh, indicates that they are going to get their periods and this is known as premenstrual syndrome and many have this condition and next is dysmenorrhea dysmenorrhea in the sense painful menstruation painful period at the time of menstruation they will have lots of pain in the abdomen region and the pelvic region menorrhagia menorrhagia means heavy bleeding if the bleeding is occurring more than 7 days or more than 10 days then it is considered to be heavy bleeding and you need to visit the doctor immediately if not there is a chance of getting anemic amenorrhea amenorrhea is the absence of the menstrual cycles it is a problem but it is considered to be not a problem in few conditions like pre puberty pre puberty in the sense before menstruation before getting our menarche like before the age of 8 the girl doesn't bleed the girl doesn't get her menses and that is not a problem and at the time of pregnancy she doesn't bleed and at the time of lactation she doesn't get her menses and even after menopause menopause in the condition uh, the cessation of the menstruation the end of the menstrual cycle after end of the menstrual cycle the woman doesn't bleed and even at that condition it's not a problem and these are the common menstrual problems i will provide questions after completing this whole chapter that's it for today guys let's meet in the next video until then stay tuned